Welcome to part three of the standard deployment video series. Before watching this video, make sure you've watched parts one and two of the series to understand how to prepare for deployment. In this video, you'll see an overview of how to install and configure an initial instance of EPM system components. Standard deployment uses a modular approach, installing, configuring, and validating one instance before moving on to the next. This modular approach makes it easier to pinpoint any problems. In the Standard Deployment Guide, open the Installing and Configuring EPM System New Deployments chapter. There is a section for each component. This chapter gives you step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots to show you exactly what to select in each page of EPM System Installer and EPM System Configurator. We'll start by installing and configuring Foundation Services. First, launch EPM System Installer. Select the components you see here to install the Foundation instance. Use the Standard Deployment Guide as a reference to make the correct selections. In addition to the Foundation components, you must install all Java web applications you plan to use on the machine hosting Foundation services, which hosts the WebLogic server. However, you only have to configure the web applications you'll be using on this machine. When installation is complete, launch EPM System Configurator to configure the Foundation instance. During configuration, EPM System Configurator sets up the Shared Services Registry, configures ports, sets up data directories, deploys Java web applications, and registers components with shared services. I won't show all the steps to configure Foundation services in this video. Just remember that the Standard Deployment Guide gives detailed steps with screenshots to guide you. When the deployment process is complete, click Finish. Next, start the deployed components. Validate the deployment by logging in to EPM Workspace. A successful launch means that the deployment is successful. Now that the Foundation instance is successfully deployed, continue the standard deployment process by repeating the installation, configuration, and validation process for each additional instance. Follow the detailed steps in the Standard Deployment Guide so that the deployment matches the standard deployment topology. When you've deployed all the components, restart the web server so that the web server is updated with information for all the Java web applications you deployed. Refresh EPM Workspace and then launch it to validate the components you installed. In this example, validate the planning installation by launching the Classic Application Wizard. Now you have a working deployment with a single instance of each component. This wraps up Part 3 of the Standard Deployment video series. In this video, you learned how to install and configure an initial instance of EPM system components. Click the link to watch Part 4 of the Standard Deployment video series to see an overview of how to scale out EPM system components and install EPM system clients. For more information about EPM system or other Oracle products, visit the link shown here.